Okay, so for this next unit, we go into equations. And there are a lot of equations. But they're very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and we've gone over some of these to start. So why don't we start where we left off? Sounds like a great place to begin. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. So let's start with our dvm dt equals, we have our leak times our leak driving force. Mm -hmm. And next we'll do potassium. Mm -hmm. Which we worked hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Um, times our potassium driving force. Okay. That's K. And then we have our sodium mm -hmm. and that driving force. Right. But those conductances are a little bit more complicated than the leak conductance, aren't they? They are. And so let's, we'll erase and then add that in there. So we talked about all of the gates mm -hmm. and how potassium has end of the four. Mm -hmm. And now GK plus is changed to what? That's the maximum conductance. That's right. So that's just a fixed number now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of a sort of variable conductance, it's the probability that the gates are open mm -hmm. times the max conductance. That's right. And the same goes for here mm -hmm. with our max conductance mm -hmm. sodium. Good. So moving on from here mm -hmm. to really, really understand this. Mm -hmm. What we need to understand is how N changes, and how M changes, and how H change. With what? Um, well, they all change with time. Right. And they're activated by different voltages, right? And fortunately, with the current of the voltage clamp, you actually have measurements of those things. Mm -hmm. So now what do you do? Well, they're all functions of voltage and time. Mm -hmm. So now we need to figure out what these snazzy functions are. Right, and you might want to call that F1, F2, and F3 because they're not necessarily the same functions. Right. Good. So let's walk through the equation. So let's start so with... which equations on NeuroWiki are we going to focus on now? So what you wrote up there was equation 9, right? Yep. Good. So now which ones do you want to focus on? Let's get to equation 10. Sounds good. So we're going to start with just the end. Okay. Because that's sort of the simplest one that we can uh -huh. talk about. Yeah. Um, and we want to know how n changes with time. Good. So we're going to use a differential equation. Which tells you the rate of change of n. With time. Mm -hmm. And what is that equal to? Well, let's reason through it and then we'll put the math there. Okay. So we've got for any one end gate mm -hmm. at any given time, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what when when the gate opens or when it shuts. Right. But now we're actually dealing with the population mm -hmm. of gates, aren't we? So for a whole population of gates, we can get into we have the population that are closed, uh -huh. and we have our population that are open. Okay. And then the change in n mm -hmm. will be the gates that are closed then become open. All right, why don't you draw a little line showing us that. Close going to open. So I'll just use C going to O. Good. And we have the population of open that are going to close. So those actually get subtracted from the, the first one, right? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. So now let's let's put this in terms of numbers and right. populations. Now and one stuff. thing that may help us is n ranges from what to what? Zero to one. Right, because it's a probability, right, of how of being open or being closed, or it's the percentage of gates that are open or closed, either one is equivalent. So if n is the probability that they're open. What is the probability of the gates being closed? N minus one. One minus n. One minus n, yes. Right. 
So why don't you give us a concrete example so that's clear? Let's say n is equal to 0.2. That's 20% of the gates are open. Gates are open. Then what does that mean about the number of gates? Right, 1 minus n, which is 1 minus 0.2, is 0.8, and that means that's the 80% of the gates are closed, or the percentage or the probability of finding closed gates is 0.8. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So now. So the same works up here with the population closed and the population open, because we're just going to talk about probabilities. Right. So let's start. So the population that are closed, we're going to say, is 1 minus n. Right. And the population that are open is going to be n. Right. And so now we have to add in the, the rate, of, rate change. of change yeah, for closed gates to become open and for open gates to become closed. Exactly. And we're going to call those alpha n and beta n. Good. And that explains how we get to equation 10. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the equation that Hodgkin and Huxley used. That's right. Um, but it's not the one that's used as much today, right? Right. right. Um, and we go through the derivation to the equation that's used today mm -hmm. in the narrow wiki between equations 10 and 11. That's right. Um, but it's all just renaming these variables mm -hmm. and um, Doing some simple algebra, algebra right. right? So the equivalent thing that you could write is dndt. And the way to think of this, let's do this in words first. There's some steady state value that you're trying to get to minus your current value, your actual current value. What you're going to say actual. Yeah, actual value at this instant. Yeah. I'll say instantaneous value. Yeah. That's a good current yeah. value mixed yeah, up with. Yeah, that's you're right. Instantaneous instant. value. It's what, what it is right now. Value. And that's divided by a time constant. So if the time constant is large, then whatever that difference is, is going to get scaled down by the time constant. What does that mean about the rate of change? It's going to be slow. Exactly. And if the time constant is very small? Then this is going to get scaled up, right. and it'll be very quick. All right. Now let's write that in symbols, the way it is in the equation. You can do that right underneath. And then we have both equations up. So this is just I'm going to call the steady state value under the infinity. Right. If, or if we're doing sub infinity. Right. n sub infinity, that's what we're doing, the n gating variable. Mm -hmm. oh, we've got the n in that's our right. differential equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the instantaneous value is the one that's changing with time. That's right. So that's just n, and we'll call this... Time constant for n, so it's tau sub n. There you are. Now... You have four things that you've introduced, two things in each of these two equations, alpha n, beta n, and n infinity and tau n. Mm -hmm. So now to finish the story, so now we know how n changes with time. We can write the same kinds of equations but for m and h, mm -hmm. no problem, so that we don't have to write all out. But now we have to deal with how do we talk about how alpha n and beta n or n infinity and tau n change with what? With voltage. Exactly. So we've got time. We've got time taken care of. And we know that the changes from closed to open and open to closed have to do with voltage based That's on right. all, all of our voltage stepping problems. That's that we right. Did. All the, cur the voltage clamp studies we did where we stepped, if we stepped to very positive currents, it happened fast. So the very positive voltages, it happened fast. Very negative voltages, it didn't happen at all. So or it all closed. So these rate constants have to be a function of voltage. Mm -hmm. Good. So um, now what? So in NeuroWiki, mm -hmm. we've got a whole bunch of equations that right, allow from, us to get to right, these so voltage from 12, things. Equations 12 to 16 are really providing a brief review of the underlying, really it's thermodynamics or chemical kinetics, the reasoning that led Hodgkin and Huxley to generate a specific form for these rate equations as a function of voltage. Is that how you spell underlying? Underlying is fine. Okay. <laughs> and kinetics, right. And that's where that comes from. And again, we're not holding the students responsible for that. It's just, it's not magic. They yeah. really had a reason for it. We're, we're showing you how it works. And it's, 
it's useful to understand, but we're not expecting you to understand That's it. right. And if you just understand that there are these equations that have some exponent, e, to some value that has a change in voltage, which may be scaled by something, and then you might add something, you might take the reciprocal, and all of these give you the voltage dependences for the rate constants. Right, that's sort of the general form. It might be delta Vm, but that's basically the form, and that's all based on this underlying uh, thermodynamics, yeah. kinetics reasoning. There are other constants and stuff involved, but that's this is the gist of it. That's right. So now, if you have all those equations and you actually type them in, the other thing that you need which is on NeuroWiki, is the list of the parameters. What are parameters? They're constant values. Exactly. So every time I have, for example, if I have a value, uh, well, the e, e sub L is an example of a parameter, or GK max is an example of a parameter. These are all things I need to set a number for them in order for me to go on mm -hmm. and do what I have to do. And once I have these equations for the rate constants they have, parameters as well. So in NeuroWiki, there's actually a link that you can click that shows you all the set of parameters. And so we're not going to be asking anyone in the course to do this, but if you happen to be intellectually curious, and especially if you have interests in engineering or computer science, you can take your favorite numerical equation solver, differential equation solver, MATLAB, Mathematica, Java probably, Java, C++, anything that can do ordinary differential equations, you can type in these equations and you will get action potentials. And I can't resist putting in a plug if you take Bio 300, Dynamics of Biological Systems, as you have, mm -hmm. you were actually able to work with model action potentials. We worked with the Hodgkin and Huxley and then I did a whole different model which used equations of this variety. So just to, to reiterate, mm -hmm. so equation 9 we already sort of know yep. and we added these gate variables. Mm -hmm. um, equation 10 is this one that makes sense now. Mm -hmm. Same with equation 11. Mm -hmm. 12 through 16 are underlying kinetic and thermo properties mm -hmm. and then 17 through 19 is us showing you the actual forms of either the voltage dependence for the rate constants or the differential equations for the other gating variables, m and h and so forth. And then there's a clickable link at the end of equation 24, which gives you the list of all the parameters so you can actually complete the model. Mm -hmm. Now, why are we bothering the students with all this detail? Why do <laughs> they care? This is a lot of detail. Why do they care? Yep. Um, well, it's important. I think in terms of explaining that it isn't just magic. These are the underlying equations that can get you from all of that boring stuff you learn in general chemistry and stuff to all this really like complicated kind of cool stuff. And it's a sequence of steps and these aren't just equations being pulled out of thin air. They're not just because we told you. Um, these they actually are the represent an, an analysis program. And they're the program that people now follow to do the biophysics of nerve cells, which we'll talk about in the next video. And with these models, you can, if with these equations, if you want to, you can model these. Yes, you can use is, these for mathematical analysis and a whole variety of other things. Extremely helpful. Incredibly yeah. helpful. But we're not holding you to understand um, the step-by-step -step details of the equations. We're just sort of trying to show you the general gist of things. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah.